Hi, Gary Allen here for another Designer's Landscape project. Today, we're going to remake and remodel this entire entrance. This sidewalk comes out. Pavers, naturally, will be installed. And a whole new look here. In the backyard, a patio, a fire pit. We've got plenty to do, so let's get to it. and a nice wide mouth like this. We're gonna increase the, the radius here at the driveway so that you can come and go from either direction. This sidewalk here is coming out. It's a little bit straight, so we wanna do a little bit of push and pull. We refer back to the plan a couple times and we actually wanna meander the walkway. Let's see if I can get this picture drawn for you. Something like this, about five or so feet off of the, the house. And then it will come right towards you, swinging out in a nice smooth radius again. Let's bring you to the center of the front and talk about the crossover concept. Okay, at the front door, this is kind of a small space, even with the column here. So that's why we're gonna redo and do a nice paver landing here. We'll eliminate this step. We'll eliminate this step. So it'll be wheelchair friendly or user friendly to come straight out the door at this new desired height and then it'll taper off so gently. But the landing now is gonna take on a, a circular shape from side to side, little left and right. I mean, this will almost look patio-ish if you will. So how will the design come to? Well, we talked about the crossover concept. I, I drew the sidewalk here, so this will turf will go back into here. But we've drawn this bed. We came and actually removed the sod from here because I'm going to take this line and now I'm going to cross over into the front walkway area like this, a circle. These are complementary curves, if you will. Another circle, and here's the crossover. We go with the same radius. We don't alternate these so that this circle on the inside will mirror the one on the outside there. It's going to look really good. Complementary curves and the crossover. Now one more thing. When we start building our plants types and varieties here that'll be low, they'll have the crossover concept too and they'll accent the radiuses rather than the squares and corners of the houses that so many people do. Now before we even go into the backyard, let's set up our patio trees for the front and install them. Now there is one thing I want to ensure and that is that the bottom is flat. Why? Well, the container it's grown in is flat as well. One way to check is just to drop the container in there and see how it looks or how it fits. What we want to do is not pile up dirt all around the hole. You can't see the grade. I've taken all my soil moved it to one side so I can read the existing line or grade that the tree needs to be installed in. We want this line and this one on the top to match up. Planting or installing too deep is a common problem in the landscape field. It really is. All right, he's a little too low. See that? I need to pull him out. See how much deeper that is. Not good. Not good for the life of the plant. Now, I better lay him down. And what I'm gonna do is make the hole then just a little bit wider. Let's try something about like that. Okay, back in we go to test it. Ah, oh, it's looking better, looking beautiful. I don't have to have him right in the middle, but I will because I wanna prove something to you. Instead of taking this soil and trying to fill it in around there and packing it to eliminate the air pockets, here's what I suggest, that we actually widen the hole. Yes, we chip away at the outside edge, caving that in. Now that does a couple things. 
it makes the hole wider. Let me pack him in so he'll stand up for us. See how that widens the hole? And I can take all this soil then, using my heel, and pack that first layer in very good. This is a good time to consider the direction of the tree, the shape of it, the angle. Every tree or plant has a front side and a back side. Now, I just continue filling the leftover dirt I have here, I'll just spread out in this area. Okay, as I fine tune him, I just wanna show you that my grade in my existing container, see that, the top of the root ball there, is just at the right depth, perfect. Now, no need to use a water ring here because these have full automatic irrigation. This tree will be here for decades. I still can't wait to see the shape of this circular little landing area here. Our three trees, K-I-S-S, keep it simple Sally, as we say. We've used one variety of holly and planted it in three different locations. Odd numbers for specimens, but also the continuity that we're bringing by repetition rather than making it complex, having three different types of trees. Wouldn't you agree? Again, with the red berries, these are green year round. They can be shaped or trimmed to any desired height and width. So one, two, and our final one here. Ooh, I'm gonna stay on the sidewalk. Yeah, right here at the driveway. Let's take a quick peek in the back and get our game plan before the pavers come. Okay, a backyard scenario. Don't know if this gate is gonna stay or go. Anyway, new fence comes in, vinyl probably. This will get pushed back so we create more space here. Uh, a nice deck that leads to the master. So we're gonna redo this with pavers. An upper patio, if you refer to the plan, you'll see what I'm talking about. Then a curved little walkway that joins us over to the pool area. A few patio trees and some lighting, we can make this look really good. Also, we're gonna work on the rust problem here shallow well you can tell the irrigation has been spraying over spray we're going to drop these heads and try to keep everything in the dirt instead of on the concrete this pad comes up because the hot tub close to you is going to get a circle a nice curved patio an entrance here and all that leads to the fire pit you're standing on the patio naturally and so we'll have to include a little walkway here we're going to build a fire pit around this stump if that's okay that's what the homeowner wants to do you see he's got wood to burn here so with a couple benches wow those things are really talking aren't they cool um but this will look better two benches on the side the fire pit 60 inches so it's going to be pretty large to go around the radius of that stump we look forward to major changes but we've really got to wait for pavers concrete to be removed and we start laying our floor As you can tell, our pavers have arrived. We are using today a three-piece system, six by nine, six by six, and four by six to install. Now these have been rolled or tumbled to soften the edges and give it an antique look. That'll look really good. Now we've still got plenty of prep work to do, uh, a stump that needs to be removed from the backyard, as well as some roots and the concrete that needs to come out as well. Let's take you from start to finish. Our final prep work, the laying of the paver base and installation of our pavers today. Let's begin with our front sidewalk. Look how easy the forklift makes this work. Remember the old fashioned way of breaking up concrete into five, 10,000 pieces and then hauling them off individually? Well, these individual slabs or pieces weigh hundreds of pounds. Now they're placed into a dumpster or a trailer 
hauled to a recycling plant and the concrete is actually recycled and reused for many project sources. Having a good operator is essential. Nilton actually makes it look easy, but these panels, again, weighing hundreds of pounds, have to be balanced carefully. Now, I want you to implant in your mind the straight look that this sidewalk previously had because it will change when our pavers go in. At the front step, he pulls the pad out, takes another bite, and hauls it off. We've marked our existing sprinkler heads so that they can be worked around and kept in place during the project. And when it comes to the backyard, we learn that the pool deck and the deck outside the enclosure were continuous, so we had to make a saw cut there, cutting even through the steel that ran from the uh, existing pool deck outside. So with the cuts complete, we can now haul this off as well. Think of all the handwork this saved and sped up the time frame to prepare for our installation of pavers. Again, a good piece of equipment, a good operator, makes it look easy. Now our grade is pretty much set and flat, but there was an old tree stump in the middle of our site, so watch how Nilton, with the forks again, pulls up this unwanted stump, as well as many other roots we found around the hot tub area, and we haul them off. A Little bit of fill sand brought in to consider our final grade. And then notice too, that we tamp or pre-tamp our existing soil before we add any paper base. Lightly moisten it, run the compactor over it. Here's our recycled concrete. Now there are other paper bases to use, but uh, the recycled concrete packs really well. It's fairly inexpensive when it comes to the other paper bases, and it's easy to work with. And using a recycled product makes us feel good about it. Here's an easy way to fill wheelbarrows. We begin at the front walk. Again, a new shape or outline is designed or laid out and the paver base put down. Spreading, leveling, moistening, compacting, and then another final raking. Make sure it's very slick and smooth. seems to go fast once the pavers begin to be placed.
what a difference the pavers have made. Remember, we were to eliminate two steps here, one at the front door, one at the porch. Now we have a nice landing, more entrance to work with, more space, and it gives an elegant touch to the front door, the entry to the home. I like the way the pavers meander to the driveway as well. We're ready for our plant setup. Before we do that, let's talk about the varieties we're gonna to use today. Now, when it comes to selecting the plants for today's project, we're in the North Florida area. That's uh, plant climate nine or eight, depending on the winter that we'll have. And we've got some shady areas on the north side of the house. This is where the bromeliads will come in handy. We wanna think about maintenance, color, uh, contrast, as well as texture. And this nice textured azalea, a gerbing white, will be used in the backyard to actually grow up about hip high or so to create a little bit of privacy and buffer. Oh, the sun roses. This dwarf rose blooms all through the warm season. Add a nice color that won't be too hard to maintain either. Now for some contrast also, the Gold Mound Duranta. This is really gonna add a highlight. And I wanted to show you these three gallon Apostle Iris. Uh, again, a part sun or part shade plant as a three gallon. These are gonna create a great impact. And I'll use them as a foundation plant up close to the house. No maintenance basically at all. Now for fragrance here, we're using some tea olive. This plant is not the prettiest. It's kind of upright if you will, but the fragrance of these flowers around the back, the patio and the paver area in the pool, perfect. And a new introduction for us is the blue days. This is a, a kind of a dwarf variety as well. The blue color and the grayish foliage are gonna be nice for the landscape. Low impact, low maintenance. The Alternanthera here, Joseph's coat, that's yellow or gold in color. And then also the low juniper and variegated flax. These are low maintenance plants that'll be great for the landscape. Now I'm wetting this down to really make a, a point. And that is when we seal these pavers, look at the rich color how it enhances with a wet look. That's what the sealer will do. It'll not only provide a protective little layer of coating, but uh, that rich wet look that looks so attractive. So um, let's show you what we've done here. Remember, since we're still talking about those complementary curves, well that applies not only to grass and bed lines, but to patios and pavers too. Look at this inverse curve. The yin and yang again. So use that wherever you can. Uh, how many of your friends well, coming off the patio of here would have just run a line of sod here in a point and one over here in the point? You see what I did? You see the curve, the circle? Well, it's easier to mow. So when you come through here, you turn right around and go where you need to. So with this circle, it still allows a point of entry or entering into the lawn over here. Then the raised patio all these curves come together good. I put some variegated flax next to it. That takes us up to the ramp with the, uh, the fire pit there. And then I'll show you what we did on this side. The homeowner had a, a chefalera tree in a potted plant inside the pool patio. We placed it in here. It really hides some of the uh, electrical stuff on the wall. Looks good. I've got a light there at night, so that'll be illuminated. The variegated flax on the brick. We need something for over here. We've set a few things up. Uh, the guys have been installing in the front, so why don't we go join them and get ready for mulch. This is uh, what we've set up here at the front. A left and right balance, I've used the iris as a foundation plant in the corner, the gold mound duranta in front, and then left and right, with the low bromeliads and some color. Now, if you reflect back, I was talking about the crossover concept here. Don't let the design of the hardscape, the walkway in this shape, uh, curve now, uh, dictate how you're gonna lay out your plants. I drew this curve, this radius of this circle, and now we've put turf in here. So the crossover still continues, like the walkway was not even there at the beginning. You get it? And then we followed that concept with the bromeliads. Now, there's another thing I want to kind of impress upon you, and that is 
complementary curves. When I look at the size of this radius of turf, I've kind of carved out the same size inversely around the tree. So we'll use the crossover concept again to cross over the walk from here. We jump the sidewalk again with the same plant material all the way to here. Uh, see, some people treat this section as different from the inside. No, we want to use the radiuses. So whether you call it yin and yang, give and take, push and pull, these complementary curves work. We certainly have accomplished a lot today, and it seems like it in such a short period of time. Let's take you back. Go ahead, enjoy the befores and afters of this project. Well, we hope that's given you some ideas for your next landscape or paver patio project. Well, we've enjoyed having you today. I'll see you again soon. I'm Gary Allen. So long.